Here is a point file with wildlife observations and I have symbolized my points uh, from yellow to just one observation to blue with the highest of seven observations at that location. To create a density map from this point cloud, we can do that in the spatial analysis tools under the densities and here we have options and I want to start off with a simple point density. So the point density result looks like this. Right now I'm starting with just a hundred meters going out from the point and asking what is my density around that point if I take a hundred meter radius. I turned on here my resulting raster file and right now we cannot see the results but if we zoom in there are my results and this is here a radius exactly of 100 meters around my points and all these points here have a particular value let's just remember point 000032 so that's four zeros and wherever we click inside here where we have just one point we get point 00032. Let's select another point where we have a higher value. In our case here, we have a value of 6 in the point. Correct that that is a value of 5 in the point. And here now we have values of 0, 0, 0, 1, 5, 9. Let's remember those numbers uh, and then compare them to the spreadsheet in a moment. Here in my spreadsheet, I just do the same simple density calculation. So the area of a circle around a point is pi times radius squared. And I'm applying this for my area. In my case here, radius is 100 meters. And my area here is 3.414, which is pi, and then just squaring B3. So my circle here is about 31,000 square meters in size and I have only one observation. The density is simply my wildlife observation divided by the area. In this case in square meters. So here we have our 0004031, the same value that we have found here. And if we substitute our value here for five, five observations then we simply multiply that value by five and come up to 00159 which was the value around this point. So that's how density is calculated but it is very clear that this is completely meaningless. This doesn't give us any further information than our original point cloud. Maybe I have to increase my distance and so here you see the result of doing the same thing for 500 meters distance. The same symbology for the legend. Now of course because we have increased our uh, distances for the yellow points now here, if I click on there now I have a much much smaller value and that makes sense if we go back here and increase our radius to 500 meters we get here to extremely small values. It is also clear from this image here, especially when we zoom in here, that the point density analysis gives us rugged transitions between resulting raster density values, and this is of course completely unrealistic. That's when we want to apply the kernel density to smooth things out. So here's exactly the same result, simply using the same distance, but now with a kernel density tool. And now we have smoother transitions, and for the first time we see areas that blend together into some kind of habitat. The question now of course arises, what is your ideal distance? And you simply have to play around with your values. So here is my result for one kilometer search distance, for two kilometer search distance over here, 
and for 4 km search distance. It becomes apparent that 4 km may now get into cores, so the best values are probably using a search radius somewhere between 1 and 4 km. So it's, it's obvious from these results kernel density is superior of a point density, and the question really is your distance. Typically, because our values are very small, what we would want to do is apply in our tool the area units that are actually of units. Right now, the default was square map units. Map units are in meters, and if we would have chosen simply square kilometers, then our results here would have all been multiplied by a million, a million square meters in a square kilometer, and would have much easier values to work with. Here's another example of point density. We're doing crime analysis in Philadelphia in this case. So we have a crime database from which we select only those that were robberies. And again, from the robberies, we select only those that were robberies in January for now. Now we can take this point cloud and create densities from those. And again, I start off with just a point density using, in this case, one kilometer search radius. And we observe, of course, that we have the same overlay issue that we were discussing earlier. And let me explain this issue actually in 3D. So here we see the same point cloud, but now in 3D with the hill shade turned on. And uh, if we zoom in into a particular area, we can see that the actual circles here, those little cylinders, they have a plateau on top. And where they overlap, there we have a jump in the same kind of unit. That, of course, does not make for a very good density map. Again, let's compare this to a kernel density. I just change some settings here quick. Here we see it now for the kernel density, where we see that the crime rate at one location is distributed now over a one kilometer wide cone so that the volume within the cone equals the same as the value itself. Going back to our map, this of course would look different if we use the kernel density. That now makes more sense. We can start identifying certain neighborhoods. But again, our search radius right now, one kilometer, Let's go through them five kilometers, different picture over our whole study area. And then 10 kilometers, then you wonder, does a crime that happens here, is that affected by activities that are 10 kilometers away? These are, of course, the social questions that we have to answer. But here we clearly see certain hotspots. And now we're doing the same thing with 20 kilometers. And it becomes quite obvious that that is really very, very general. 20 kilometers doesn't work. Probably the five or maybe a lesser one. So we see certain centers and then we can zoom into certain areas and find out what happens within those particular neighborhoods. That's all for today. Until next time.